Morning everybody, thanks for watching today. I apologize I didn't have a video last week, I've been pretty busy. We actually went on a little vacation and it was really nice to get away and just kind of relax. Um, but today I'm back out in the forest. I am doing another project at this location, this preserve. And this is my uh, really first full day I'm gonna be out exploring. I've been here twice before, trying to do a little bit, uh, kind of a, a reconnaissance to see what's out and about. Um, but today is really my first full day to be out and explore and see what we can find. Um, so my plan today is to um, just hike around the area, try to get a feel for what's what's out and about. Um, there's a lot of tufted tip mice and um, white-breasted nuthatches up in the trees right now, so they're calling. There's some chipmunks chittering away behind me, um, so that's a good sign. And yeah, we're just gonna see what we can find. Um, if you're looking closely, you might see that I actually have a different camera today. Um, I am really excited that I have actually uh, switched back to Nikon. Um, I sold my Canon R5 and I now have the Nikon Z9, um, but we'll get back more into that farther down the trail. Um, so now I'm gonna head down and see what we can get. around to try to find the chipmunk that was chirping behind me and now it's gone quiet so let's move on and see what else we can find. I'm really hoping I'm gonna have a little bit better success here today. I've been here twice before and I haven't had much success in finding anything. A lot of the birds that I found here have been high up in the canopy, like the, uh, the nuthatches and the chickadees. Even the woodpeckers have stayed high up in the trees. So I haven't had much success in getting any pictures. So I'm hoping today that's gonna change. Right now, all the nuthatches are high up, probably about 40, 50 feet up into the trees, so. Um, we just keep moving on farther up the trail and see what we can find that way. When you're exploring a new spot, it's really important to go slow. Kind of observe everything that you can. Because I just found a, uh, a barred owl feather on the ground, which is a really good indication that they're in the area. And this is actually the area where I was here um, a week ago, and all the birds were freaking out. The chickadees are doing their alarm calls, the squirrels are doing their alarm calls. So I thought there was an owl nearby, and now there's a feather on the ground. So it's a good sign. That was really nice. I was sitting here for about a half hour. I had heard 
uh, probably at least three or four woodpeckers up in a dead tree that was high up in the canopy. Um, so I decided to sit and wait and see if they would come down. And as I was sitting there, a mixed flock of uh, tufted titmice and white-breasted nuthatch and black-capped chickadees came through. And I was able to get a couple pictures of them. Um, they're always hard because they're, they're moving so quick through the, the, the sticks. And they actually came down low, so I was able to get some pictures of them. But a good thing about this time of year is when you have mixed flocks like that, there's a good chance that there's going to be some warblers migrating through with those flocks. Um, there's actually a study out that um, these warblers, as they migrate through, if they're new to the area, they actually search out flocks uh, with tufted titmice and black-capped chickadees because they are around all year long, so they know where the food is. So these migrating warblers actually kind of latch onto those mixed flocks and kind of forage with the, the chickadees and the tufted titmice. So, um, and today that was the case. There was a at least a pair, uh, at least one pair of um, black-throated blue warblers that was with them. And I also heard a uh, um, another warbler as well. Um, geez, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, so, but I got a couple good pictures of them. The, the male was higher up in the canopy, um, but the female actually came down and I was able to get a couple pictures of her um, before she flew off. And now it's now it's quiet again. They've all moved on, so I'm going to um, pack up as well and move farther down the trail. was a, a red-bellied woodpecker up in the trees, but it just flew, I think, a little bit farther into the forest. But there's a lot of woodpecker activities, so that's really nice. Sounds like I've relocated the mixed flock, but it looks like they're higher up in the canopy this time. sitting here. I was hiking for about an hour or so and didn't really find anything. Um, so I found an old rock wall and I'm just kind of sitting along it right now. And there's all sorts of chipmunks that come in and out of the rocks in this rock wall. So I've gotten a few videos of them and a couple pictures. Um, they actually finally just stopped doing their alarm call because I was here. So they're actually kind of getting back to their normal behavior, which is really nice. And now there's a, sounds like there's a flock of chickadees and tufted tip mice that are hopefully coming this direction. But we'll just have to wait and see. Right now I've got two chipmunks that are uh, probably about 20, 30 yards in front of me. And uh, they're just kind of sitting on the rocks, keeping an eye on me.
that and some good footage of the chipmunks. I actually got one with an acorn going back into its burrow, um, but it looks like they've actually gone into the rocks for a little while now. So I'm going to leave them be and I'm going to head kind of towards the direction of where I hear the birds calling and hopefully we'll get some uh, pictures and videos of the birds. Um, but it sounds like they might be higher up in the canopy so we'll see what we can get. like I found a bit of a game trail here so I'm just going to follow it for a little bit and see if I can find a good spot to set up and then maybe just sit along this for a little bit. This is actually one of the first ones I found which is surprising so I'm gonna see if I can follow it. I mean there's definitely some some scat. So let's see if I can find a spot where it opens up a little bit more and set up. chipmunks in this forest. And there's a little opening here, but it's not very much. There's so many white pines. It makes it really dense. You can't really see more than a couple yards into the forest because it's so thick. Just continue on. found a little bit of a clearing and I'm actually near a field as well so um, field forest edges are usually a good spot for wildlife um, so I'm just going to sit here and hopefully there'll be some activity I actually did get um, a couple more pictures of a chipmunk I was walking through um, the forest and there's ferns all over the ground and there was about three chipmunks that didn't really care about me and was kind of foraging under the ferns so I sat down there actually had my lunch there and uh, got a couple pictures of the chipmunk um, but I've moved on to this section now and I'm just kind of kind of sit and wait and hopefully there'll be some activity I did hear a pileated woodpecker fly over um, and it kind of went this direction so I'm hoping that it might come kind of back over in this area it sounded like it was just flying right over um, which is unfortunate but there's a lot of large um, dead trees around in this area so I'm hoping that this would be a good spot for it so we'll just have to wait and see. There's a lot of woodpecker holes on these trees around, um, kind of in like a white pine grove at the moment. So I'm just gonna sit and wait. And like I said, hopefully there'll be something. There's some birds kind of calling towards the field edge behind me, um, but we'll see. But since I'm sitting here waiting, I figured I would talk a little bit about um, my new camera new gear, how I switched or why I switched really from Canon back to Nikon. So before I actually started this YouTube channel, I actually started photography with a Nikon. My first camera was a Nikon D500. I loved that camera. Um, it was just, it was the perfect camera for me. It's what got me hooked in wildlife photography. Now it's why I'm obsessed with it. Um, and actually about eight months before I started this YouTube channel, I actually switched to Canon to the R5. Um, and really the, the main reason I switched was because I wanted to try out the eye detect autofocused um, for the cameras. Um, I ended up actually just switching to Canon because I heard so many good things about the R5 and the autofocus and the eye detect. And it really is a great camera. Um, I have no problems with the Canon camera at all. I love it. It's, it functions great. The autofocus is amazing. Um, but the problem that I always had was it never really felt good in my hand. I don't know why 
the the grip of the Canon cameras just don't feel um, as as good in my hand. The with button placement is just a little bit off to me for whatever reason, um, and I always liked the the Nikon feel and the, the grip and the button placement. How you can customize the buttons a little bit better in Nikon, I think. Um, so I used the Canon uh, for about a year and a half, um, and I actually finally decided to go back to Nikon. Um, I'm actually able to, now the, the Z9's been out for a while, I can actually get it used for cheaper. Um, and so I traded in my Canon R5 and the 600 millimeter, and I ended up getting the, the Nikon Z9 and the Nikon 600 millimeter. It's not the newest 600 millimeter, it doesn't have the, uh, the built-in teleconverter in it. Um, which is fine. I don't need that at the moment. Maybe, maybe someday. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's it. Um, so I'm happy to be back. So far I really like it. This is my first time being out. I was out a little bit in the backyard with it yesterday. Um, trying to get used to the buttons and customizing everything, putting it back how I want it. Um, and it's been, it's been very nice. I really enjoy it. Um, so far so good. No regrets. Um, so hopefully that doesn't uh, offend anybody on the channel that I, I switched from Canon to Nikon. Um, really, it's it, it doesn't matter what gear you use, it's just a matter of what, what's comfortable in your hand. And for me, for whatever reason, Nikon just always feels comfortable in my hand. Um, I like where the buttons are, I like the grip, and that's just it. Um, so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, now I'm just going to sit quietly and hopefully some odd life will come out. been sitting where I was for about a half hour, an hour, and there was a couple squirrels and chipmunks that were around. But then in the next tree over from me, there was this high-pitched chirping that started, and it's still going. It's a red squirrel that's about 50 feet up the tree at the moment, and it's just on one of the branches on the pine, just chirping away at me. And so I moved a little bit ways away from it, and I put on my camouflage stuff and I actually put on some <laughs> branches over my camera to try to camouflage it. Um, I know it knows I'm here, but I'm trying to see if I have my camouflage on and just be still and quiet. I'm hoping that maybe it'll forget about me and it might come down the tree and start foraging again. Um, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm just going to sit here and see what happens. I don't know if this is going to work or not. It just stopped doing its alarm call and it's going quiet, except I don't see it. And I have a feeling it went farther up into the tree or back into its den in the tree. So I'm just going to stay still and wait here for a little bit longer and see if it maybe comes down. But I think it might have uh, just decided to go up and, and hide. But we'll see. If it comes down, I'll let you know. This is insane. There is a huge mixed flock of birds around me right now. I was laying down, I was about to leave, and then I heard the chickadees, and I was like, okay, I'll just sit and wait for a minute. And there's probably, I don't know how many species are in this mixed flock. There's, there's white-breasted nuthatch, black and white warbler, there's a magnolia warbler, there's red starts.
right, that was some of the best, best birding I've had all summer. I haven't seen that many species in one spot in a while. <sighs> Definitely fall migration time. But they're kind of over towards the field farther and kind of fall on the edge of the field. So I'm going to pack my things up and move along the edge of the field too and see if I can get some more pictures of them before they all disperse and go deeper into the woods and I lose them. Well, that was really awesome. The, uh, the mixed flock has since moved on farther into the forest. Um, I was planning on following them, but they, they kind of dispersed rather quickly. So um, I'm gonna continue on back onto the trail and see if there's anything else. It's uh, almost three in the afternoon now, so I'm hoping that maybe some larger mammals might start coming out pretty soon. It's a beautifully cool day, so they don't need to worry about the heat. Um, so I'm just gonna go down the trail and see if there's anything else out and about. But that was a really nice experience with all those birds. I haven't seen that many species in one spot probably since spring migration, so. Um, and it's still pretty early. It's only uh, mid-September, so. There's still probably about a month or so of migration left, so it's a good sign, very good sign. a little bit of a wet section down here off the trail so I'm just gonna kind of sneak down here a little bit it drops in elevation and there's actually some water and I'm going to set myself up somewhere and see if there's any activity down here Well, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I've been down around the water for about a half hour now, and there's still some birds calling in the vegetation around the water, but there's so much leaves still that you can't really see them. Um, there are some birds higher up in the canopy as well, but they're just too high up. So I'm gonna leave you here. I'm gonna make my way back to the car, and if I find anything on the way out, I'll let you know, but uh, that's gonna be it for me so far. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'm really hoping to try to get 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. Um, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.